Oh, good Friday morning. Oh, good Friday morning from the Bronco for the John and Dave show. It is the best way to start your Friday. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Welcome to uh, the side of the road. In the Bronco, here I am getting ready to have uh, my man, the host with the most, Mr. John Acuff, join. Literally about nothing. Please rise, remove your hats, and welcome Mr. John Acuff to the show. Hey, hey. <laughs> Look at us. What up? Uh, wait a second. What are you wearing today? I love it, and I don't even know what it is. I'm ensconced in corgis. That's what I'm oh. doing. It yeah. makes perfect sense. It's Friday. Yeah, look. look at all these corgis. I'm covered in corgis, as they say in England. Do you have a corgi? No, um, but I have a teenage daughter who thought this shirt was hilarious and then bought me that shirt and said the other day, Dad, you haven't worn the corgi shirt. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to wear that Friday morning with Mr. Dave Hollis. Why that's a wouldn't happy you? Shirt. This it's feels right. Yeah. Oh, hey, man. You have a Bronco? Is that an old Bronco, new Bronco? It's a 1969 Ford Bronco. Thank you for asking. Uh, her what name's color? the Incredible Hulk. Uh, it's a it's a dark green, like a forest green, white stripe down the side. Oh, come on. Uh, come I on. mean, I will say it's a 1969 car. Maybe the only thing in this vehicle that is from 1969 is the VIN number because it has been rebuilt like piece by piece, and so there's Ew. very little that is old on this old Bronco. Was that the dream? Like, were you like someday? No, this was the midlife crisis. This was, uh, I'm struggling to find happiness. I'm turning 40. Maybe yeah. investing a lot of money into a money pit called a Bronco would actually make me feel better about myself. That didn't actually work. I'm going to be honest, but it's, it, a, it's a great ride. It fixed everything, right? As soon as you owned it? it? Just I, a silver bullet. You know what? If you're yeah. having trouble <laughs> in your life, I can recommend one thing, and that's just go yeah. out and grab yourself a Bronco. Exactly. Everything gets better immediately. Exactly. I um I tried to have one of those midlife crises. I, I wanted a, there was a Ford Focus RS, which is like their super hatchback. I have a Sorry, I'm not trying to laugh. I'm not trying to laugh. It's fine. That sounds good. Sounds I, good. I thought I was a Jeep guy. My wife was like, you get mad when you step in melted ice and socks in our kitchen. I don't know that you're a Jeep guy. And I was like, touche. And so I, I've got a GTI, a VW GTI, which is like a golf, like a little go -kart. Which I love, by the way. I love that car. Yeah, I love this car too. So then Ford has one that's like 350 horsepower. They only sold it in Europe. They brought it to America. And I was like, I'm like, I'm going to go get one. We test drove it. And when Jenny got out, she was like, I will throw up every time we drive this if you get this car. Because like, it's insane. On I'm, rails. I'm an aggressive driver. Like. I am an aggressive driver, so that was that was helpful for me to know. Okay, I'm not. This is a strange this. segue, but can I ask? Do you have a consciousness of when you realized that product placement was a thing in television programming? Ooh, um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you. It, I do. I'm gonna, well, no, go ahead. Oh, please. I, I, then no, I'm going to tell you mine me. because you triggered it with what you just uh, story told around. For me, it was um, 24, like with, uh, with like where they were like Jack Bauer, it's be some long shot while he was like leaning on the hood of the car with the emblem. And I was like, I feel like they might have contributed some money to this program in some way. When did you realize it? Same, same ish kind of thing. It was actually it was an episode of Alias where mm -hmm. 17 times in a row, Jennifer Garner or Victor Garber or someone said, we're, look, we're, we're looking for a, a Ford Focus, a gray Ford Focus. We got to follow that Ford Focus. Like they said the words Ford <laughs> Focus. I thought it was a drinking game. Like what is yeah. happening? Yeah. Follow the Ford Focus. But that's that was my so first fun. time. Yeah. yeah and, and, and then you go, it's weird. I might get a Ford Focus. I worked at Auto Trader for years what? and we would do focus groups and we'd tell people, we'd ask people, why'd you buy that car? And they'd go, I researched cars for like a year. And then a guy on the bus told me this car was good. And we'd go, we'd go, did you know the guy on the bus? He'd be like, nah. So nope. like, like, why did you buy a Honda Element? And they'd be like, there was a stranger on a bus who had one, and he said it was good. Feels so, right. Yeah, so, that stuff's fascinating to me. Feels I didn't know right. you had that, dude. That's, that is legit. I, you need to text me a photo of that. We're going to finish the episode with a walk around of this very Ooh. vehicle that I'm sitting inside of. It's like, it, it, is it. A, it is in my pride and joy, for sure. Well, I'm, you know, the shirt is a good segue into the first question. Let's go. Which is, what dog would you put on a shirt? So you're going to some event. It's a weird event. I'll give you that. And they say, hey, you have to show up 
wearing a shirt that has a dog on it. Yep. That's one of the conditions for the Already exam. Know. I don't make the rules. Yep. And what, what dog are you putting on? So the first, well, my, my, the first dogs I had uh, when I was a kid, they don't count. But the first dogs I had as an adult were pugs. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a tan pug named uh, Chunk and a black pug named Lilo. And I would get the picture of Chunk, tan pug, and uh -huh. it would say pug life. That's pug it. Life. Like thug life, pug life. I'm rolling around with just this, because he just looked just really upset with everything that was happening. Like he wasn't mad, yeah. but disappointed all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I actually have a story about a shirt that had some form of that on it. We went to the exotic pet expo, which if you're ever in Nashville and you have $3 and you're near the fairgrounds, it is the greatest experience you'll ever have. Cause they sell everything like monkeys and like coyotes, things you shouldn't be able to buy. And I swear to you, I got a shirt cause my wife wasn't paying attention. And it said, it was somebody's hands like that. And it said, frog life. And she's like, you don't even own dart frogs. I was like, but that dude made a shirt that says Doesn't matter. frog life. Doesn't I'm matter. Like, yeah, I'm super into a fibby. And like, dude, there's people that sell shirts with little pockets for your sugar glider to sit in, like, which is like a flying squirrel. So if you're ever in town and it coincides, it would, it is the best $3 you'll ever spend. That's three good bucks. That's three good bucks right there. Pug life. Transition, when are you going to Burning Man? Isn't that coming up? Bad news. Uh, my year of saying yes uh, inevitably has come up against uh, COVID sometimes saying no. They have uh, not agreed to do uh, Burning Man this year. They pushed it for a year. So I know they canceled this year's Burning Man. So I said yes to something that I'd never done before, that I would never, ever do. I'm doing a whole host of those kinds of crazy yeah. things. It was happening end of August, early September, somewhere in there. And then they said, you know what, we'll see in 2022. So I've already committed. I've gone, I've put my money into the collection uh, of other humans that are renting a motorhome, an RV. I'm, I'm already, I'm already in. I put the money down. I can't get it back. So of course I am not going. You don't register for Bernie, man, right? You just throw money into the universe and it gets to them somehow. Like, is that how, like you, you say the word bliss four times in front of a mirror and what, uh, I don't know how it works. Yeah. I think you just like start letting dirt accumulate on your skin and you walk through the, the, the doors yeah. and they're yeah. like, oh, you're a part of us. Welcome. That's Come so on down. Yeah. Okay. So but what are uh, three other things on your yes list from this year? So that one got postponed. It got a little canceled. What else are three? You know, you go, okay, John, that one got postponed. There's other things I've said yes to. Other things I've said yes to. I mean, like, I actually think of my relationship with Heidi as a big, like, just say yes. Like, just go with it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't think too much about it. Just, yeah. like, go with the flow. There's, like, people ask all the time, like, who's going to move where if it actually continues? Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's going to continue. And there is, there, there's no, like, short-term answer to any of those questions. I'm just saying yes to continuing to be inside of a relationship that is just yeah. unbelievably great for me. Um, saying yes to like trying new things so like i got a guitar like if you're not if you're going through a divorce and you don't get a guitar are you even going through a divorce yeah. i don't yeah. know but like me does, does having... a lawyer give it to you at the settlement is that oh like, yeah he no, has it's a like, closet of guitars and he thank you. you i'm glad that we made it through this i'm happy that it was amicable and now yeah. mr hollis here is your guitar could you <laughs> please start playing it because uh this is what do you have to do. play your way out do you play a song as you walk, like Wonderwall, I'm assuming? Is that that's, the one? That's my, my goal would be to have had that happen. I can play like four chords at this point, but like yeah. learning how to play guitar, like something like that. And then like another like yes for me has been like saying yes to these physical challenges that I'm doing in real time. So like I am today 30 days away from the first tri triathlon that I will ever complete in my oh, life. Man. Not the last one, but the first one, right? That's like, awesome. I am in this like crazy bulking up. I've been doing this crazy, awesome strength training, working out kind of thing. I put on about 20 pounds in the last month. And it is, it's so rad to see what my body is capable of because I've said yes to trying something that I've never tried before. I just, I love it. That's amazing. But what, is it an acoustic guitar or an electric? It's acoustic. I'm not, I mean, I, I don't even know that I will graduate to electric. Then do you, what kind of guitar is it? Is it a Martin? It's a, uh, it's brown. Okay. It's brown. Is that what you yeah. said? It's brown. That's what everybody who's into guitars right now is like, you son of a, like, it's, tan, it's, it's like, it's like tan with a brown neck. So, you know, like it's that one. The long skinny part is darker brown. The, yeah, it's, the a little, it's a little darker. It's got like little silver things that like you twist and then the, yeah. the, the, the strings change sounds. Are you taking lessons? 
Yeah, I got it through uh, something online, which is terrible, but also yeah. like the only way that yeah. you can do it, like the only way I could do it when I started was, uh, it was like Mashable sent me an email like, are you getting divorced? Here's some guitar lessons. And I was like, Dude, oh, how Mashable, good are their analytics? Are you reading my diary? Yes, I am. I would love oh. to actually have some. And so I paid the $70 for the 12 lessons or 20 lessons, whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but. Um, do you, living in Austin, do you now have to form a band? Is that I, city rule? Well, I, the thing is, I didn't even know I could grow facial hair. Between the guitar and the facial hair, I'm basically walking every day closer to a Mumford & Sons cover tribute band, yeah, which is ultimately my calling in life. Would you call it Mumford & Uncles? Like it's extended family? Like what, I mean. What would they're they just be? bringing, they're bringing everybody in. Hey, yeah. hey, big guy, come on down. I you just feel like if, it, if you're in Austin and you own a guitar, like this is, you're either going to start a food truck, that's one path, or you're gonna start a band. I just, you're on the, like a year from now when we're doing these, we'll go, remember that time? You said I just you want were... you to notice this. Yeah. I don't have any leather wristbands, bracelets yet. No bracelets. But uh, yes. leather le leather wristbands and bracelets feel like the next next step in my uh, year of saying uh, yes. So I, it's, it, it could happen. I love all of this. I love all of this. Okay, speaking of arms, cause you just showed me them. Let's go. Will you get another tattoo? 100%. I'm actually in real time, like I'm about to throw it out to the community, but I am going to get uh, an old timey sea captain. Like I want to get like nice. gray grizzled hair, like big like old big beard. Hat? Yeah, like, yeah. The, like yeah. The, 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 the Gordon's fisherman, like me. Do you have like, you a know, tattoo like, artist picked out already? No, I don't, no, I don't. Okay. But like, I don't have right now anything but words, right? Like I have script on my body. I don't have pictures on my body. I was on this trip this last week down to the Dominican Republic and it was amazing. But like the, the person who runs the international work for this group called Help One Now, ArmTat, Jason Morris, my pastor who went with me, arm tats. And I was looking and the, it like, I was not a tattoo person growing up, I actually, judged people who had tattoos sure, and now sure. I am becoming a human who has them but they have these beautiful pictures they don't have text they have pictures yeah. and so like when I was thinking of like well what's next for me I'm gonna have something that is representative of this thing that I am going through season wise of becoming the captain out on the choppy waters of my own life and the way that the yeah. book that I'm having come out here not terribly long from now kind of touches on those themes so Old timey captain. If someone knows I, how to draw an old timey captain, send it my way. Dude, here's my one. I don't have a tattoo, but I have a lot of ideas about a lot of things. So you want there to be a weight and a line. You don't want to be able to get in that day for the tattoo parlor. Like you want the person <laughs> to be booked out. Like You're right. When you find the person, you want them to go, yeah, I can see you in January because I'm dope and I do dope art. And then you go, cool. That means you're amazing. You don't like... You can get a tattoo today. I could walk into like Panama City Beach, Tats or Us, and get one, and it's gonna be a dolphin, and it's gonna be jumping in the form of a heart. That's not what we're trying to do here, Dave. No, it's not you're right. I, I want I want someone that's got at least a five and a half week wait, like five yeah. and a half weeks. Good. Number one, good just a long enough window of time to make sure that yeah. you are absolutely positive that that's the thing you want to get, but also you know that that artist is dope. Yeah, well, I um, a friend of mine, his kid got a tattoo, and it was terrible. And he said to him, and I think this is a parenting lesson, he said, next time let me know so I can help you pay for art. And I think you talk about a heart, like, that's a full-hearted parent that doesn't go like, oh, it's terrible that it us says, hey, I love you. I want you to pay for art because art is expensive. So let me help you pay for art. Like, dude, who doesn't that's want good. a dad that says that? that that's good. Oof, that is good. Okay, if I get, next question, if I got a tattoo, what do you think I should get? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Book cover? You think the latest book? I mean, the is thing funny? is, I love the book. I, I do love the book cover. Like, I was going to try and bring it back to something around the books, but I was thinking of, like, well, what's the through line? Thing? of your head which is like all the goodness or something that's I, I don't know like I'm trying to think of like something like I don't it's weird to get yourself tattooed on yourself yeah. Yeah. but I think know, a I, statement I think a statement is like I'm a word guy I think it'd be words like I don't know I do you know Ryan Holiday do you know him yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. He has two of his books titles on his arms and like yeah. they work. Like, yeah, in like very prominent places, by the way. Like, he can't do the dishes without recognizing no, that no, silence, no. like that, uh, what is it? Silence is the key? Uh, the, the key. obstacle the, is the way. Obstacle is the way. Ego is the enemy. Ego is the enemy. Yeah, but he also I don't think he has the silence one. I don't know, he has two. Stillness is the key. Yeah. Stillness is the key. That's commitment, that's commitment. Ooh, okay. Here says, how about a soundtracks cassette tape? Ooh, that's interesting. Like an old school mixtape. Old that school mixtape. That I like. That's that actually right. Like. Yeah. yeah, that is really okay, Dave. Speaking of, we'll just take. I mean, that's live feedback. Let's let's uh, improv a little bit. New question. It's the eighth grade. You're going to the eighth grade dance. Maybe you make a mixtape for a lady, a uh, tenderoni, if you will. Um, what songs are you putting on there? I need your oh. like. Hey, we're gonna slow dance, and I'm like, maybe it's you know, it's it's couples only skate at the Roller Kingdom. What are you What are you putting on there? This is such a crazy thing because when I was growing up, I lived in a house that did not afford us access to contemporary music except Weird Al Yankovic. Okay, so like <laughs> nothing that was playing on the radio were things that we could buy. We could listen to, you know, like Worship Christian Contemporary or Weird Al Yankovic. Those were the two things. And so I actually remember when computers were introduced in classes, I was in line in my class and we were trying to create a graph of who had what as their favorite artist and i could not for the life of me come up with a single name of a contemporary artist because i had no access and so three people in a row said tears for fears was so like you, their their favorite and so of course i just mimicked and was like tears for fears i love tears for fears they're the best they're so the best. i just i love oh, their I like, tears I, I like their tears and their fears i'm just like yeah. super into both of their fears and yeah. tears and so like the idea of in eighth grade me putting together a mixtape it's laughable because it would have been me like, reaching for like you know like what is cool i didn't even know what cool was cool could have knocked me on the shoulder and i would have just been like I, excuse me i'm sorry but i got in your way are you my age? I'm 45. How old are you? 46. Yeah, 46. Yeah, so like you missed a lot of rap. Like, did you miss Run DMC? I, yeah, Run DMC. I mean, the thing is, I have an appreciation for Run DMC now, but Run DMC for me was something that came as a classic <laughs> throwback retro thing once I was out of my parents' house. Yeah. Dude, you miss like the Beastie Boys and Run DMC and Public Enemy and oh, like so like, many this things. Is, Big Daddy Kane, even. I don't even know if he got too short. Wait, what about Young MC? No Young MC? I mean, the thing is, I know Young MC from like an MTV show where he was someone who was coming out of retirement on a reality series. Like, oh, I don't no, know Young MC. Young He's MC tired. Days. No. <laughs> no. Dude. That is so. I know. When you say, okay, so obviously, like when you say we could listen to this, we couldn't listen to the other stuff. The stuff you could listen to was like contemporary Christian music, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so you Michael, got DC Talk. Michael, 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 Michael W. Smith, right? Andy DC Grant, Talk? Just like, oh yeah, DC Talk, for sure. And by the way, like DC Talk was probably like, that's about as cool as it could get. Jesus Freak was, was a, a great beat. album. Jesus I don't Freak care, like great love too. is a yeah. verb. We're going to let that go. Because that, like, they were doing their best. But Jesus Freak, like the hard way, those are actually good. People are just listing stuff you missed. Boys to Men, Tupac Shakur, Def Leppard. Holy, holy cow, dude. I, I mean, I saw this meme the other day. It was Tupac dressed up as like Tupac with his like thug life yeah. tattoo exposed. It said Tupac. And then it was Tupac, the, like the executive in a suit looking very, very sharp. And it said, Usted Pac? And if you are a Spanish speaker, like that is one of the, that's the formal, one, the formal, the formal, yeah. the formal Pac. I just oh, like that it made so me good. it made me laugh four times in the day. Anyway, I yes, just I, feel, I miss Tupac. I love these conversations because the, it's so <laughs> fascinating the stuff. Because I'm just going like, and in my and I, you know, my first concert. What was your first concert that you ever went to? My first concert was the Steve Miller Band, which is such a random thing because it was like they'd been around for a hundred years by the time I got to go. But you didn't go to like a Christian concert before then. No, I because I went to Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant. They did like a synthesizer tour kind of deal, and I and we I that was my first concert. So when people were like. My parents took me to Guns N' Roses. I'm like, well, we went to a different concert then. No. Wow. I actually worked 
the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater as a concessions salesperson my senior year in high school, which may not mean anything to anyone, but it was an outdoor amphitheater down in Orange County, California, and every big act rolled through town. And as an 18 year old who'd never been exposed to anything, mm -hmm. I had a shirt that looked very similar to yours right now. It wasn't yeah. corgis, but it was something that was Hawaiian in like flavor that was part of what you had to wear inside of concessions. It allowed me access to a tunnel from a parking lot. I would roll in, do my work. But when an act showed up that I had never seen before and all of a sudden it was like, what are these sounds? I would take that shirt off and I would go up on the grassy knoll and I would sit and enjoy a concert. And that was like, I like got a whole bunch of free, thank you very much concerts really? for having sold popcorn and beer to human beings as an 18 year old. That's like not knowing chocolate exists and then you go to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's like, you thought the best snack and the best treat in the world was pretzels. Like your whole life, but then you went, and then somebody's like, here's a factory full of chocolate you can swim in. Like, that is mind blowing to me. Oh my gosh. I love these conversations so much. They continue to crack me up. Okay, next question. What's your most awkward sport? So, you know, like, if you had to throw the first pitch out at a baseball game, are you blowing that pitch? Like, are you, like, is it no. hitting the lady in the stand? Or are you like, nah, I got it. I got a, I got a two seam fastball. The nerves would get me probably in throwing out the first pitch, but I am someone who could on a pretty regular basis from the mound, wind up, hit a catcher's mm -hmm. glove. I'm not worried about that. I think like anything that involves a weapon, because I'm very like, I, I know that like in Texas now, like part of being here is that I should be looking forward to and have like the hunting season uh, sure, circled sure. on my calendar. I'm just like, if you were to give me a bow and arrow, if you were to like make me throw a a, a, a sword or or mm. a sword, a, an, like axe. an axe, people throw an axes. Axe. People throw axes. If You're you thinking were, of you ninjas. Were, we're not. I'm, that's I'm, not the question. I'm, I'm, I'm not a ninja. But if you were to, if you were to ask me to shoot a gun at all, I would just I I I would be awkward and scared and whatever because I'm just not. That's just not my jam. So mm. I don't know. Maybe the guy who cross country skis and then skeet shoots. It, like Oof. that that would just be the worst because I yeah. don't want to cross country ski for one minute. And then you want me to shoot a gun too? No. Uh, no. Keep it. You can keep that as, sport. As soon as we invented downhill skiing, cross country skiing should have ceased to exist. Yes. Like as soon as we realized it's wicked cool to go down the mountains quickly. Are they giving out awards to people who cross country no, ski? No, I don't understand. Not, no, it doesn't make any sense. Is there a certificate? Sense. No. It doesn't make any sense. No. I'm going clay shooting next week with a client. I'm going to South Dakota for a speaking engagement. And that was one of the options. I was like, let's go. Yes. Like, I'll try yes. that. And, That's and I was like, I, I think it's a shotgun. So I think I'll, I think I'll be all right. Could you do fly fishing? Like if you, somebody I goes, fly hey. I fished once. Yeah. I fly, I've mm -hmm. only done it one time, but it was okay. absolutely amazing. It was also unfair because it was like this completely stocked salmon yeah. fishery kind of thing like, that was just like ridiculous. So like rainbow trout jumped into your pockets kind of thing. 100%. Like yeah. it was not a yeah. real representation. Like I, I threw the line out there and I had four fish just like knocking. Like, can I please come in? Your, yeah, your can little I jump into your basket? That'd be amazing. Okay. okay last question. We're going to end with a serious one. So we've been we some fun. We've been yep. frivolous, if you will. Is fame difficult? Because you went from not having people know you to having a lot of people know you. Like, not we're not, you know, like Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. But yeah. you went from nobody to a lot of people. Is that challenging? Uh, well, the weird thing is, I don't, I mean, like, I really don't think of myself as being famous. I happen yeah. to, like, maybe have a handful more people than most people that would recognize me in an airport or something. Sure. But, like, I don't think of myself as being that. And I'm, like, I hope, like... God, like I'm a, a, as normal and weird and dorky as maybe almost anyone. So like, th I think there's that. If there's anything that's weird about it, it's that, um, you know, like if someone were to walk up to me and I was having uh, like a weird day, if there, it like ends up feeling like there's some pressure to make sure that I yeah. meet them and manage to like deliver on whatever expectation they might have of having an awesome interaction. Like mm -hmm. maybe there's that, but I honestly, anytime I've ever had an interaction with anyone who's like, man, I'm super excited to meet you. I love your book, whatever. I am as I'm, I'm going to be more excited to meet this person that I've never met before 
in real time. So like, it's just like, I don't know, like it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't. I think you know. the, the level, like, I think it's, I don't get recognized a lot, but it's people giving me compliments at random moments of the day. So like, if I'm at an airport and somebody comes up, they go, hey, I really like your book. Who wouldn't like that? Like if yeah. you're walking through the airport and somebody said, hey, um, that project you did was really good, thank you. You'd be like, oh, wow, like that's, and the joke I do with my wife, because again, I only really get recognized in Nashville because I speak here. When you speak in an area, those people work places. So like if I go somewhere and somebody's like, oh, like at a shoe store and is like, oh, hey, I read one of your books, blah, blah, blah. When we walk to the car, I say to my wife, do you ever just feel so lucky that you get to spend all this time with me? I mean, that person, it was two <laughs> minutes, but you get to go hiking with me today. Like we're gonna have lunch and dinner today on Saturday. Do you ever just, and she just goes, uh, so that's our running joke. That's yeah. our running joke. But I was it, curious it, because- I, I will say this, like one thing that I just like, I don't get, and I, it, it, and it's great because like, it, I think keeps me super grounded. Like I'll run, I'll jump into DMs every once in a while. And someone's like, hey, it's my husband's birthday or hey, yeah. we're doing like a fundraiser or I just, uh, yesterday, uh, someone in the community has a son who was having a surgery. And so like, I just real quick, like I recorded a video like, hey buddy, I just wanna let you know that I'm praying for you. I hope that you have a fantastic yeah. day, whatever. And like, to me, it was like, you know, a eight second thing. And to them, it was this like really cool, cool thing. Yeah. And I think like if there's a thing that kind of messes with you, it's the idea that like someone just being decent and sending a quick note would be worthy of any kind of like, oh my goodness, I can't believe because yeah. man, if I was going through a hard thing, I hope someone want to send me a quick eight minutes, eight second video, video and say oh. like, good luck with your surgery. Like it doesn't even occur to me that like it should be a thing. So Maybe that's a thing that's a little bit strange. But. No, but I think that's powerful too. Like the idea that you can encourage and delight people is is super fun. Like that's yeah. like that's super. I mean, I remember Stephen Pressfield, who's one of my favorite authors. I remember where I was when I got the email. I asked him to endorse one of my books, and he wrote me the kindest email back. And he was like, "Whatever you're doing, stop it and and focus on writing." He's like, "Whatever you like," because and it just was like so kind and like. We were in Crested Butte. I remember where I was sitting in the car, like, and that was because I looked up to him as an author. So, like, the chance to do it with other people is like, that's where it's super fun. Like, it's oh, super, sure. super fun. Okay, oh, you sure. promised a tour of the car. Let's All go. Right, let's. Speaking of things that'll bring people just a tiny bit of joy on a Friday, I mean, let's let let's take a look at the old Bronco, shall we? All right. So, it's a 1969 Ford Bronco. Ah, so, come on. I mean, there she is. I mean, look at this. I was ready for today's conversation. I have a <laughs> tripod on the steering wheel. That uh, is legit. I mean, this is it. This is this is the this is the the beast. Dude, that is good looking, dude. Right. And the interior, like, did you upgrade the interior where it's like it's got modern tech? Well, I mean, look at this. This wasn't on the old uh, original. You open the door and a and a foot holder. Oh, like, watch jumps out! Down at you. Watch out! But, Secret step up. It's not like that fancy because like truly when it rains, water just pools in the bottom of this thing. So yeah. it's still got like some of the classic features of 1969 in that. And it's not fast, right? Is it one of those where like, cause my friend has a defender from the sixties and he's like, it likes 60 miles an hour. That's about. Uh, well, I mean, this'll hurt somebody's feelings, but uh, this isn't the 1969 uh, engine. Oh. I have a, a Mustang engine in here. Really? So, it's uh hold on i gotta see how to open how do i open my hood i think you just uh, say siri open hood hey uh -oh. alexa oh. reveal engine let's see i know this is the kind of thing people love i want to sit here dave and watch you do this all day all right here there we go. you go all right we got to end with the engine but i mean look at this oh man right i mean i don't is know that, if you like an engine but like it's a is weird. that a v8 it's a V8, it's a 30306. I don't know. There's, That's there's legit. A lot of, there's a lot of horsepower. Power. So should, when I'm in Austin, I want to come see that uh, see that vehicle, see you hang out on the patio. Done. Love this. Dave, last thing, last thing, last thing, last thing. Where can people go to pre-order your book? Like this oh is book goodness. season. It's book season. Yeah, We uh, have a book called Built Through Courage coming out October 26th. If you go over to my website, mrdavehollis.com, you can find out all the details about the book, throw your email into uh, the website. We'll start sending you updates on all the bonuses that you get with awesome. the book. Uh, and there's a way for you to order it from, frankly, anywhere 
they sell books on the entire planet. So check it out. Awesome. All right. You guys heard it here. Guys, fun Friday. Dave, always a pleasure. Thanks, um, brother. I, I feel like I'm going to have to put a mixtape together for you on like things <laughs> Dave missed in the summer of 1987. Yes. Like you didn't even yes. know Pour Some Sugar on Me dominated one summer. Like one summer, it was the entire summer. And so I feel like I need to put together a mixtape for you just on songs you missed in 1987. I need it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. I hope you have a great weekend, brother. See you, buddy. All right. Take care, guys.